Alright, hey everybody, hope you're doing well. So this video is going to take you through another practice example of part writing in a major key using a figured bass. Now, this video I'm going to have be a little bit different than my other videos. I'm going to actually time myself on this one as if I was taking the AP exam um, here in 2020. So, um, I would urge you, if you have not seen my original major key part writing from a uh, figured bass example, um, to go there first, because I move a lot slower and I explain things a lot more um, in that video. So go check that out first. But if you're just wanting more practice, here we are. So what I would do, also, if you feel like you would like to try this one on your own, what I would do is pause the video right here, copy this example down on a piece of paper, and maybe work it out and then come back and finish this video and watch how I do it. Um, you could then compare notes. Now realize though, we might have different answers um, and both of them might be correct. So just take that into account. Yours does not have to exactly match mine. It just needs to be right in its own way, if that makes sense. Now question one involves two part writing examples. and. Um, you're going to have to do one from figured base and one from Roman numerals. You have 25 minutes to complete both of those, right? So not 25 minutes individually, 25 minutes to, to finish both examples. So what I would do and what I'm going to do now is put 12 and a half minutes on a timer and make sure that I hold to that and, um, and kind of go through that. But again, I'm going to kind of zip through it so that I can practice as if I was taking it. So um, here we have an example in B-flat major. It's in 3-4 time. There's four measures, and you have the bass notes already given to you, and below you have the figures um, or those inversion symbols prepared. So we're going to create the other three voices, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, starting with the soprano. So my timer uh, is 12, set to 12 and a half minutes, and it's going to begin right now. Okay, so first, I will talk you through this while I do it. So first, we are going to realize the figured base. We have a B flat in the base, nothing written in the figure, so that means it's a B flat, and we're going to spell them out, B flat, D, F, right? So it's a B flat chord in the key of B flat, that's a major one. Here we have uh, a 6-4 chord, which is second inversion, built on a C, so that's the fifth of the chord. So we have um, A and F is the root, so this is a C, F, A, C with the C in the bass, so that's a major 5-6-4. Here we have a D, but it's the first inversion, so it's the third of the chord, so B flat is the root. Um, so we'll write D, we'll write all of our bass lines down at the bottom. And we'll go ahead and write B flat and F up here. So this is a 1, 6. Here we have uh, an E flat chord in root position. So that's going to be the major 4 chord. And look just like so. Zipping on along, um, we have an E flat and it's a first inversion. That means the C below it is uh, the root. So we have C. E flat, I'm sorry, I'm going to write the E flat on the bottom. C E flat with a G, and that is a 2, 6. C is the root in the key of B flat, scale degree 2. All right, now we have a seventh chord, a root position seventh chord built on F, F, A, C, E flat. That's a 5, 7. Moving to a, a first inversion chord built on D. Or centered around D. So D is the third of the chord. B flat is your root. B flat D F. This is a 1 6. Um, next, we have a first inversion chord built on the E flat, which is actually the same as this chord. So this is a 2 6. If you can recognize that you've already done it, no need to redo new stuff. And then our final chord is a root position uh, triad built on the F. So that's going to be a major 5, and this is going to be a half cans there that we finish with. Okay, so there I've got everything figured out. Next step that I'm going to do is to draw my arrows 
showing tendency tones and resolution tones. We have those between dominant chords to tonic chords. So here's a dominant chord, 5, 6, 4, 2, a 1. Our leading tone, which is A, will need to resolve to the B flat. Uh, this is tonic, predominant, predominant, dominant to tonic. So we have the leading tone resolving to B flat. And we have the seventh of the seventh chord resolving down in major key a half step. So this E flat resolving to D. Okay, uh, and then we have predominant, dominant, and that dominant doesn't resolve, so there's that's it. So our tendency tones are now marked. Um, if you want to go ahead and strike through the very bottom notes that you wrote, which was the bass line, that means that you have covered that note in, in the chord already, um, and you don't have to get it again unless you just need to double something. So now we're ready to write the soprano. And I have, how much, just to do a quick count, I have eight minutes, eight minutes and 50 seconds left, so I'm doing, I feel like I'm doing pretty good. Our soprano line, contrary motion. So bass line starts kind of low, rises up, middle, back up. So I'm probably gonna try to start higher to descend to mid-range. So um, B flat uh, is a possibility, D is a possibility, F is a possibility. Knowing that I'm going to try to descend, um, I would say either the D or the F. Um, I'll say, why don't we start with the D? I don't know, something about being that high up on the treble clef around F just makes me nervous, even though I know I'm going to try to descend. Um, I feel a little more comfortable about that D. So I've got that there. Um, bass line moves up, so if we can move down, that would be cool. Um, we, we need an F and an A, but we can get that in the tenor and the alto maybe. In a 6-4 chord, it's very common to double the fifth. So even though we've already got that C, one note down would be C, and that would be okay. Stems up. So we're descending, one more note up in the bass, so if we can go down, uh, B flat, maybe we could grab that B flat and double the, um, sorry, not doubling it, we could just get the root of that chord there. Okay, uh, bass continues up, so either we could, if we don't want to descend, we could maintain, right, we could oblique motion. Um, so we need a B flat uh, or a G, I would say um, keep the soprano on the B flat. And that's not contrary motion, but again, that's oblique motion. One line stays the same, the other moves. All right, keep going. i got to talk less. Um, and we got that B flat. So um, the bass line stays the same. Uh, so we could do whatever with the um, soprano, C or G. Um, why don't we move back up to the C and just catch that right there. Okay, now we have F. We need A, C, and E flat. Um, how about, what if, see the bass line moves up, why don't we do the, well we could do the skip down to the A, as long as it didn't make things too, too complicated for the, uh, for the alto, we could come to this A and resolve to B flat, I like that, or we could remain on the C, Although the soprano is the melody, I don't like using common tones. I like using those. Why don't we move up to the E flat? Have them do a little jump. Right? Um, we've got similar motion, but it's not parallel. And then have it resolve E flat to the D. Make sure you're writing the same rhythm. Okay? Um, then we need a C and a G. Uh, bass moves up, we can just move this down to the C. Grab that. And then the last chord, we need an A and a C. Why don't we just leave um, the soprano, let's just leave them on that C. Dotted half note, forget about it. Okay, how's my time? Five minutes and 15 seconds. This is tight. Um, of course, you won't be talking uh, uh, through a video when you do it, so hopefully you'll be able to do it with a little more brevity than I can. All right, so now let's fill it in. So we've got, uh, we need an F. 
but we're going to have to double something. B flat would be good to double. Um, but why don't we double the B flat right there in the tenor and catch the F right there. We'll see how that works. The distance between bass and tenor doesn't matter. Um, common tones when possible. So F, continue to keep that. Okay. Um, let's see. We need an A. So we can get that here in the tenor. That A is a resolution tone, so it has to go to the B flat. Follow your arrows. And let's continue with keeping the F. So, so far I like it. Really not much motion, um, which is perfect for alto and tenor in this activity. Um, all we need is a G. Uh, we could get it in either voice. It's a four chord, so we're going to have to double something. Uh, why don't we uh, just leave the tenor on the B flat that's doubling the fifth and go ahead and get the G right there. Okay, now we need a G. We can leave it in the alto. Um, and we're going to need uh, to double the note. The root of that chord is C. That's probably the smartest. Remember, the root and the fifth are the smartest to double the third only with good reason to avoid some type of part writing rule. Okay, um, A and a C, so we need, we need to get both notes. Uh, we already have a C in the tenor. Let's just leave that singer right there. And now let's get our A. We've got some similar motion, but it's not parallel fifths. Um, the A resolves to the B flat. Good. So now we need, we have, in this chord we've doubled the, the third, which is, I don't know, in a, in a one six chord maybe is okay. It's not my favorite. Um, I really feel like we need to, so here, you need an F. You have an F written. It's a long way to go. You can jump up to the F. It's a long way to go. Um, personally, I kind of like, in this situation, is to omit the F just so that the tenor's not jumpy, and what I would do is write a B flat just to keep the parts really close. Now you have exactly an octave spacing between tenor and alto, so you know you're maintained at the maximum distance. Um, now we need a G. I'm going to send the alto back down to get that you know down into the range a little better. And why don't we grab the root of this chord here with the tenor? So now my spacing issues, are, which were at the max right there, are a little better right here. Um, and then our final chord, uh, FAC, all we need is an A and a C. Why don't we leave the tenor right there and have the alto be on the A. And we're good. So I have one and a half minutes left. So I can check over my work, um, you know, um, or you could just leave it, right? I would urge you to use all your time. If, now, the way this is going to work is nobody's going to stop you at 12 and a half minutes. If you went 13 or 14 minutes or 15 minutes, that doesn't matter. But that means you only have 10 minutes to do the, uh, the part writing by Roman numerals. Um, so, you know, you just might want to kind of judge, um, you know, how you do. Or am I faster at part writing from figured bass or Roman numerals? My guess is figured bass is going to take a little longer. So even though for this example I halved it, I did 12 and a half minutes, um, I think doing figured bass takes a little longer. So it's okay if you were going to go, you know, 13, 14 minutes um, because I think Roman writing from because I think part writing from Roman numerals uh, doesn't take quite as long. You've got kind of one less step. So my next video a little later this week will be this same exercise um, with a timed event practicing to uh, part writing to Roman numerals. So I will also post a uh, link in the description below to the huskyband.edgeoblogs.org website. I will post more practice uh, examples so that you can do those on your own and then email them to me.
Well, there's my timer. Time is up. Good luck. Happy practicing. See you guys later.